Hey guys, it's Mike here. Hobby King just released a new KK board called the KK 2.1. It's meant to replace the KK 2.0 board. This multi-rotor board is known for its simplicity, ease of use, and low price. I also like the fact that you can use it for inexpensive auto leveling for your plane or camera gimbal control. Unlike other controllers, because it has an LCD screen with buttons on the board, there's no need to hook it up to a computer to set it up. They said the original KK 2.0 has been out of stock because this one is being released. So what's new about this board? Hobby King is claiming this controller board has new found power with updated sensors, memory, and header pins. The Amtel processor has been upgraded from an 80 Mega 324PA to an Amtel 644PA. The memory has been upgraded to 64 kilobytes. The gyro and accelerometer's MPU has been upgraded to a 6050 MPU. The stock firmware is now at version 1.5 instead of version 1.2. They also have a note on the product page that there's an updated version 1.6 firmware available. The board now has a pin header for a voltage sensor connection, so you no longer have to solder the sensor to the board. The LED and buzzer now plug into the board using a Y harness. Combined with the voltage sensor, this allows the board to know your battery voltage and give you an audible and visual warning when your battery voltage gets too low. Let's take a closer look at the board layout. It still appears to be the same size which is 50.5 millimeters squared by 12 millimeters thick. The distance between the holes on the length and the width of 45 millimeters appears to be the same. The weight of the board still appears to be 21 grams with the buzzer, but I would assume that the LED adds a minimal amount of weight. The servo connectors on the left and right side of the board are the same. The pin header for the buzzer has been moved from the top right to the top left. And you can now plug a Y harness in here to support both a buzzer and a new LED. The onboard LED that was on the KK 2.0 appears to have been removed from the board. I guess it was redundant since there's now an external LED. On the far left, this appears to be the new pin header for the voltage sensor. Previously, you would just connect the voltage sensor to soldering pads on the rear of the board located here. The buttons look to be the same, and so does the LCD. Previously, two Invisense gyros were visible on the board here. Now, I only see one visible. I don't know if there's still two or if the other one is hidden. And this appears to be the pen header for the buzzer, where you can choose to just use the buzzer or use the buzzer and the LED with the Y harness. The input voltage range of 4.8 to 6.0 volts is still the same. It still has the AVR interface, a standard of six pins, where you can hook up your USB ASP AVR programmer to upgrade the firmware. The signal from the receiver and the ESC are still the same at 1520 microseconds and 5 channels. If we look at the back of the controller, labeling is a little nicer for the control outputs. Control inputs are still labeled. The ground pins don't look like they are soldered together on the bottom any longer. Also, the gyroscopes and accelerometers don't appear to be labeled any longer. The forward direction for orientation is not labeled. I didn't see this on the front of the board either. Those were my initial observations. Can't wait to get my hands on one. Please be sure to leave your comments about this board. What are some of the differences that you found with this board? Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to get reminders for future videos.